The Cosmic Companion August 9, 2022, Astronomy from Home with Alex Curry of Telescope Life. Welcome back to The Cosmic Companion. I'm James Maynard. This week, we look at doing astronomy from home. We're going to be talking with Alex Curry, one of the co-founders of Telescope Live. We're going to discuss amateur astronomy in the modern age from the comfort set of home. Now, there was a time not long ago when most amateur astronomy took place at night. When I was young, my father and I would pack up our 8-inch telescope into his car and drive up a mountainside as the sun was setting. Now, sitting in the back seat of the car alongside the telescope sat a plastic cooler full of dry ice or frozen carbon dioxide. This was used to chill the cold camera we used to photograph objects in the sky. Unlike yours truly, film works better for astronomy when it's cold. Now, once we reached our chosen spot on the mountain, usually Mount Hirsage near Concord, New Hampshire, we would unload the telescope, load dry ice into the camera, and begin the setup process. Typically, by then, Polaris, the North Star, would be shining, providing an opportunity to align our telescope to our location. Once skies grew dark and our target came into view, my father and I would open the eye of the cold camera, exposing single images for anywhere between a few seconds and the better part of an hour. All the time, constant adjustment was needed to correct for slight errors in the setup and alignment as Earth turned beneath us. After exposing just a few images, we would disassemble our setup and pack it into the car to head up back home. Once there, we would head to our dark room, first developing that night's film and creating a contact print showing thumbnail images on a photograph. This was inevitably followed by the creation of at least a print or, a print or two as the first rays of sun peaked over the eastern horizon. Amateur astronomy has made some significant advances in technology over the last couple decades. Digital photography is a revolution in amateur astronomy, making astrophotography much easier than before and providing instant results. And this also eliminates the need for cold cameras and dry ice. You know what? That's almost a shame. You know, those, those coolers of dry ice were great for cooling down canned drinks. Provided you didn't let them sit in there for too long. Now, computer tracking makes finding and following objects in the sky easier. But the cost of a telescope having to find and drive to a dark sky location and set up and tear down can still provide significant obstacles for people wishing to take part in amateur astronomy. The earliest attempt at a remote controlled telescope was the RCT, or Remote Controlled Telescope, at Kitt Peak Observatory near Tucson, designed for early tests of a project which would later become known as the Hubble Space Telescope. Today, robotic telescopes are within the reach of ordinary people around the globe seeking to explore the wonders of the cosmos. Now, several observatories now offering the public remote access to their robotic telescopes. Among these are Telescope Live and Insight Observatory, while Kit Peak Observatory now offers human-guided remote access. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. We're going to teach you a little bit about doing astronomy from home later in the episode. 
But first, we welcome Alex Curry, co-founder of Telescope Live to the show. This week on The Cosmic Companion, we are happy to be joined by Alex Curry from Telescope Live. He is one of the co-founders of this network of telescopes available to anyone in the world. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. So just can you give us a little bit of an introduction to Telescope Live? What is it and what is it that you're hoping to accomplish? Yeah, sure. So Telescope Live is uh, we're, we're a collection of robotic telescopes around the world. And uh, through our platform, we offer two distinct things. The first one being access to our huge library of astronomical images. We have about 150,000 images of already captured data of tons of targets, uh, m you know, many that probably a lot of people have never even heard of. And we also offer direct control of the telescope uh, itself. Um, in addition to this, the platform, we have tutorials, uh, blog articles, and uh, you know, various resources, things like that. But the, the fundamental aspect of it is, is that we have this, these telescopes all over the world uh, in uh, three, nearly almost four locations now, uh, Chile, Spain, and Australia. They're all dark sky sites. So minimal to no light pollution whatsoever. Uh, amazing seeing, often below one arc second of, of seeing. Um, and we use the highest quality equipment that you can come across. So it's all research grade. And with this, uh, you know, over the last few years, um, we've captured tons and tons of data, uh, both privately for, for users of work as well, who, who want to have their own images, uh, to the images that we provide um, through our subscription that people can access. Um, you know, we have all this data that's available for people to download and take that raw data and turn it into pretty pictures, which uh, you see all over the internet. All right. All right. That's fabulous. So how did it all get started? What's the, what's the, what's the origin story? Yeah. So the origin is, um, must've been about whew, five or six years ago now. Uh, myself and Marco, who's the, the other co-founder, we are working as part of a, a research project within a, a large a uh, multinational company. And what we were doing is we were looking for kind of a, a, a modern solution to cloud-based robotics. So telescopes that are autonomous mm -hmm. and they connect to the internet and they run uh, tasks and projects autonomously. And this has many different, uh, uh, many different use cases beyond just telescopes but because myself and Marco we were both interested uh, in astronomy Marco professionally and myself uh, through amateur astrophotography this is what we decided to base the project on and uh, from there it developed and we worked with universities and uh, astronomy clubs and societies to, to build this early platform and then from there uh, we, we acquired the intellectual property of Telescope Live and turned it into this publicly accessible company that people use today. And we've created several different iterations of the platform, improved things. Uh, before we used to be purely people access the platform to use telescope time directly. But now mm -hmm. we have this huge data library, thousands, tens of thousands of hours worth of uh, observations that people can access. And so initially when you we had the direct access to telescope, it was very very expensive you know it, it started from around $50 per hour of observing time which in comparison to other other sites is is still competitive and, and actually very well priced however there's this still uh, a limit to people who are interested in astronomy and astrophotography but don't actually you know people don't want to take this dive into you know spending 50 100 150 200 dollars they want to be able to access data to to learn to play with, to develop their skills. And so this is where we started with these subscription models. And, uh, you know, from $4 a month for our entry subscription, that gets you about 10 hours worth of the archived data. Um, and then we have different subscriptions based on what you want to do. 
um, and we, we run using credits. This allows you to access these, these data sets. And so from the, the $4, you receive five credits. We then have a $20 per month, $19, sorry. And that gives you 20 credits. And so with that, you can you know, access even more data. And then in the, the higher tiers, you gain more credits, which you can then use, which is more aimed for the people who want to control telescopes directly and pay for, mm. for objects that they are interested in. And so this is the kind of the story that we create for, for you as an astronomer is that you, you start off with this $4 per month. It gives you access to 10 hours worth of data, which is a lot more than people think. Mm. Uh, to, to, to more experienced astrophotographers, they may see, oh, 10 hours isn't very much. But when you're dealing with data that's acquired from dark sky sites, it's acquired with, you know, really search great equipment, you can actually produce fantastic results with just 15, 20 minutes worth of integration time, yeah. which, you know, from our backyards uh, is probably not very much. And, you know, you'll have a very grainy image, but we produce such great uh, high signal to noise ratio that you can acquire and, and get fantastic results. Uh, and so coupled with the tutorials that we have, you know, when you have the entry level $4 per month for a bronze subscription, you have the introductory tutorials teach you about what astrophotography is, how you take these, these raw images that we give you, turns them into, uh, turn them into fantastic results. And so that's mm. the, uh, the kind of story that we've built. And we're still looking, you know, we still take everyone's feedback on board from both, um, you know, people who are new to astrophotography all the way through to, to professionals and universities in order to make our platform as, as friendly and as wide of, uh, as widely usable as possible. That's fabulous. So, of course, that brings to mind the big question, why? <laughs> you know, uh, it seems, yeah. you know, astronomy, you know, had so many barriers mm. set up, you know, you know, most people can't get into a professional, uh, yeah. uh, you know, a professional observatory. I mean, if they could, it would be, they wouldn't really know, you know, what to do with it. So, mm there are all these huge barriers to people getting into astronomy. Why is it that you are breaking, why is it that you are breaking those walls down? So the, the one, the main thing that we came across is that a lot of platforms, and this is no disrespect to, to any platform or any other remote observatory, you know, mm -hmm. every remote observatory has its, its benefits, its drawbacks. Yeah. But the one thing that we came across, across continually is there's nothing really that's in the, the 21st century. Mm. Everything, we come across is 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 dated you know things shouldn't be this difficult in order to to, to get into astrophotography um especially from from the remote side when you know we all have uh in some way or another access to the internet and through this we're able to to acquire images from a remote observatory mm -hmm. and yes the, the cost of actual imaging time per hour doesn't really change because equipment, uh, you know, astrophotography equipment, telescopes, cameras, filters, it's expensive. And so this is something that we wanted to say, hey, look, we have these fantastic equipment uh, setups and we've acquired tons of data over the last few years. So why don't we use this to allow people to actually download data and use it? Um, because it just sits there otherwise. And there's no, you know, there's no loss to us in offering it to to people at the, the rate of 50 cents uh, per hour, which is kind of our, our average 50, 60 cents per hour. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with that data, you can do a ton of great stuff. And so we've seen, especially, and this is fantastic to see in our, our gallery that we have on our, on our platform, is people posting their results. Mm. And we see people who a year ago, were doing like their first images of, of Orion. Orion's, you know, everyone loves to take an image of Orion. And it has the general characteristics of a my first Orion photo. And then over time, following our tutorials, uh, interacting with our community, both on the site and off site, on social media, people develop their skills. And it's great to see that people not only are more interested and more invested into Telescope Live, you know, acquire, downloading more and more advanced data, running more advanced, uh, using more advanced uh, tutorials, but they also come back to say, hey, look, by following, uh, you know, looking at what uh, you guys have offered and using what you've offered, 
it's actually helped my astrophotography at home. Mm-hmm. And so right. these people, right. they, they have these huge challenges with their, their own telescopes and their own equipment. And, you know, using Telescope Live in addition to the home, uh, home hobby, they've really improved greatly, both at home and, and with remote imaging. And that's something that, you know, we really stick to. We don't want to compete with, you know, Celestron or Skywatcher. We're not looking to, to put them out of business. We're saying this is something in addition. You have access to these fantastic night skies. You have access to equipment that, you know, some of us would, uh, you know, only dream about uh, being able to use. So that's something that we say, you know, this is completely different to that. We're not trying to compete. Uh, you know, how many people have access to a 24 inch uh, plane wave telescope in the Chilean desert? And, you know, not it's many. Very, <laughs> it's a very, very few number. So, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, this is something that, that we say, look, that, you know, forget about, ah, you know, oh, you're just trying to replace my telescope. We're not trying to do that at all. We're trying to say this is something in addition. And it's, right. you know, for $4 a month, it's what we say to people when we meet at trade shows and things like that. Look, if you're skeptical, go try out the uh, the free trial. We offer a free trial. Go try right. it out. If you're, if you're, you know, in between $4 a month, it's, you know, a cup of coffee that right, you, uh, right, right. you have to sacrifice. So it's just, just try it. And, you know, 99% of people absolutely love it, which is mm. what we, what we really love to hear. Yeah. All right. Now you talked about some of the skills that people learn, you know, mm-hmm. that they can apply to certainly astrophotography that they take with their own telescopes. But I imagine you also have a lot of young people coming in. A lot of pe- you know, yes. young people doing their first astrophotography, say. But what skills can they what skills can astrophotography through telescope live help them develop? that they can use in other aspects of their lives? Yeah, so it, the, the, the main thing is processing. And, you know, in image acquisition and, and processing and producing an image, the processing is, a, once you've nailed down how to acquire an image, it's the majority of the work is in what you do mm-hmm. with your data. Right. And so that's really what we, what we focus on. And we have tutorials for Photoshop, for uh, for Cyril, for GIMP, for PixInsight, AstroPixel Process, you know, we try and cover everything from all, all uh, you know, from the free software all the way through to, you know, the, the really advanced stuff like PixInsight. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only is it the processing, we also help with the, the kind of the mindset of, you know, how should I be working with the equipment and the processing to decide, you know, what is a good exposure time for this type of telescope? How will this type of telescope work with this type of camera? And so when people come to, to purchase their first uh, equipment, I think they're much more well-informed about the, the type of results they'll get with, say, a refractor telescope and a certain mm-hmm. type of camera compared to, you know, large reflectors, Newtonians, um, you know, DSLR lenses. We have a couple of those in our system as well. And so it's, an edu- it's educating people on not just the image acquisition, uh, not just the processing, but kind of like a, a whole sphere of what is astrophotography really. And, you know, we, we're taking this further with our academy. Uh, we're currently this is in the works at the moment and will be released quite soon. You know, we want to, to, to give tutorials and information on how you go about acquiring the data as well, both from our point of view, so people understand how we do it, but also from the, the home hobby as well. And this is, again, you know, tying into we really want people to be able to use our platform to improve their skills in general. You know, astrophotography should be, in, should be enjoyed both at home, uh, remotely, and, you know, just through uh, looking at people's work and images and, and things like that. So that's where we're going with, uh, with this to try and, you know, educate and help people along the way from any, you know, from the very, very amateur all the way through to the advanced. And similarly with people who are, you know, uh, the younger generation who, who, very much are, uh, you know, may may not even be interested in having their own astro, um, their own telescope and set up at home, because uh, you know a lot of us live in in large populated cities. Uh, it costs, you know, it can cost a lot more money to be able to achieve uh, good results with, you know, when you have lots of light pollution, uh, you may have, you know, less than favorable weather as well. So, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, really help as many people as possible. Um, 
so yeah, that's, that's where we're going with it at the moment. That's great. And so every night, you know, I see, you know, your telescopes are pointed at dozens of objects, but mm -hmm. there are thousands of objects up in the sky at any given yeah. night. How do you, how do you pick what objects to look at? So we have, uh, we have two, two types of, um, sort of selection criteria. The first one is through objects that are recommended to us by the community. So we have this big pool of community uh, observations that are recommended. And then people on our platform can go and vote for things that they think are interesting. They upvote the request and that moves it up in the priority. And so for the most part, if someone requests a target to us, it will be observed at some point in the next few weeks. Um, and this is kind of like a free way to access telescope time. Uh, without having to pay, you know, fifty, a hundred dollars per hour to access the telescopes, uh, we also have the scheduled stuff that you know myself and the other, um, you know, the other, uh, you know, uh, staff of Telescope Live that we we choose. And uh, so, you know, you can be sure that that come the winter, we'll be looking at uh, all the winter targets. The popular ones, mm -hmm. Orion Nebula, always comes up. And the, the benefit of this is that As over well it time, should. Over, exactly. <laughs> uh, over time, we're building up a data catalog <clears throat> to the point where, you know, we have tens of hours worth of integration time on Orion. The whole, you know, the whole region, you can go on and download data from all different telescopes, um, all different field of views, different, uh, you know, filter combinations. You can mm -hmm. download all of it. And uh, it's a fraction of the cost of the actual acquisition time. And so you can download, you know, 100 hours of worth of data for, you know, $10, for example. Right. Um, and so you can download all that. And, yeah, you, you have access to all this data and you can produce really stunning images with this. And, yeah, it's, it's a really great system in that, you know, every season we're building on these popular targets uh, right now, you know, like um, M16 Eagle Nebula is, is, you know, we're building on that data set and, you know, all the, all the, the, the favorites that come out every, uh, every season, mm -hmm. we build on those and make that available uh, as, as, you know, time progresses. Hmm. That's great. And so finally, what's next for Telescope Live? What's, what's coming down the pipe? What's next? Uh, we're working a lot on the, the platform itself, how users interact with the platform um, without giving away too many insider secrets. Uh, we're working a lot on how to make image processing at the, the very early stages more accessible hmm. um, to, to more people and to make it simpler because there, there, there are several challenges to image processing, uh, you know, to download a lot of data. Uh, for some people that can take a lot of time if you have a slow inter internet connection. Uh, but also, as I said earlier, we're working on how can we educate more people, be, make it more um, more accessible to more people, not only the image side, image processing side, as I said, but also, you know, how do you take what you've learned through Telescope Live and apply it to your own equipment at home and how do you get started there? And so these are, these are things that are coming up in the immediate future. Um, I think we've now got our new tutorials platform released and so that um, is supported by both our our tutors and our um, partners who are professional astronomers astrophotographers um, some popular names in in the industry uh, but also through community members and so we want to make a, a, a central hub let's call it this a central hub for astrophotography uh, that's where we're taking uh, telescope live that's fabulous well thanks so much for being on the show alex it was great no, talking thank you very you. much for having me Likewise, yeah. thank you. And that was Alex Curry, co-founder of Telescope Live. Check them out at telescope.live. Now, the first step to doing astronomy at home is to find a network of telescopes and connect with the group. Some, like Telescope Live, work in a subscription model while others, for instance, inside observatory, charge per observation. These fees can be very affordable, as little as $4 a month on Telescope Live, or around $20 an image with InSight. 
Typically, astronomical images meant for color photographs are often recorded in red, green, blue, and luminance wavelengths. Now, uh, luminance is simply a weighted blending of red, green, and blue light to account for the human propensity to see green so much better than other colors. Now, these are commonly known as LRGB images. Now, another popular category of astrophotography goes by the acronyms SHO or HSO for hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Filter sets on telescopes can record wavelengths of light produced by these gases as electrons are excited by stars within molecular clouds. Each of these exposures is delivered to the user as a series of black and white images. Typically, these are in bits format or flexible image transport system. These files are uncompressed and can be resized without loss of detail. This format also allows the inclusion of large amounts of metadata to the image, including telescope and camera descriptions, location, and a whole lot more. And because the Earth rotates, each of these exposures is offset from each other. An app capable of aligning these images and flattening them first by color, then into a complete image is needed to start the editing process. There are several programs for doing this. Uh, my personal favorite is Astro Pixel Processor, but check out a few apps and see which one works best for you. Finally, this composite image should be polished up in your favorite photo editor. There are millions and billions of photo editors out there. Okay, well, maybe not that many. But play, experiment, and show off your original astrophotography. And show us your favorite work in the comments section here. So, try out astrophotography from your home. It's a great hobby for the entire family. Check out Telescope Live at telescope.live. Use promo code COSMIC when you sign up and to get 50% off your first two months of a silver or gold subscription. Next week on the Cosmic Companion, we're going to take a look at how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing astronomy. We have a special interview with Dr. Yosuke Kabayashi from the University of Arizona and Stewart Observatory. For his first ever interview in English, we'll be talking about his new emulator allowing astrophysicists to study the formation of galaxies in the ancient universe. Make sure to join us starting on Tuesday, 16th of August at the Cosmic Companion. Clear skies.